So once again, happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to the Buddha Center. Welcome to the temple. Uh, before we get started, I just want to say I really appreciate the effort and the commitment that you folks have been putting in to be here. And uh, so I just wanted to throw that out there. It, it's very heartening for a teacher to sit and see so many committed people that are willing to put in the effort. So thank you. On with it. Let's start like we normally do. Short period of bell meditation. Wherever you are behind your avatar, please get into a nice meditation posture. And as I ring the Qing bell, the idea is focus on the sound of the bell. We want to get that deep listening going. We want to get that concentration going so we can all absorb some Dharma today. Uh, you're going to get distracted. Happens to all of us. When it does, I just want you to gently remind yourself, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be listening to the bell. And go right back to doing that. So short meditation, pause, three recitations, and on with the uh, talk for today. So I'll give you a moment, get into a nice meditation posture wherever you might be behind your avatar. We begin at the sound of the bell. I go for refuge to the Buddha, the teacher. I go for refuge to the Dhamma, the teaching. I go for refuge to the Sangha, the taught. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dhamma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I have taken refuge in the Buddha. I have taken refuge in the Dhamma. I have taken refuge in the Sangha. Three pure precepts. Cease to do harm. Do only good. 
do good for others. Bodhisattva vow. However innumerable all beings are, I vow to lead them all. However inexhaustible my delusions are, I vow to extinguish them all. However immeasurable the Dharma teachings are, I vow to master them all. However endless the Buddha's way is, I vow to follow it completely. Swaha. Excuse me. So today, the title of the talk is No Tomorrow. No Tomorrow. And in Buddhism, there is no tomorrow. So I want you to let that sink into your body-mind for a moment. There is no tomorrow. No tomorrow, that can be a really depressing thought. I mean, especially given what's going on right now when we don't really have a clue what's going to happen tomorrow, right? So, no tomorrow. Nothing to look forward to. It's no wonder that people think Buddhism is a pessimistic religion. It's just another reason, right? That, and along with suffering. Well, in Buddhism, there is no tomorrow was a core lesson of a talk that was given by one of my favorites, Reverend, Reverend Kusala, of Urban Dharma. I don't know if you've ever gone and listened to any of Reverend Kusala's uh, Dharma talks, but if you get a chance to, I heartily recommend it. That's him right there. And what he did is he went on to explain just what he meant about in Buddhism, there is no tomorrow. And I've got to admit, I had a really serious aha moment. You know, one of those moments of enlightenment, if you will, it really made me step back. And Chris is right. He has an excellent sense of humor. What happened as I was listening to Reverend Kusla, it got my contemplative neurons really firing. Man, I could just feel that electricity just bouncing back and forth between my ears. It offered a view to me that contributes positively to a practice that is focusing on right now. And that puts our effort and our commitment into right now. So that's what Reverend Kusla was pointing at when he said there is no tomorrow. So I want you to listen deeply this time. Maybe even just close your eyes, open up that body-mind, and hear it again. In Buddhism, there is no tomorrow. Wow. I mean, let the body-mind just sit with this idea and contemplate it. Like I said, it can be depressing, it can be frightening. We just need to understand what it actually means. In Buddhism, there is no tomorrow. Why no tomorrow? Well, today, and all the experiences that are combined within this day, they're all moments, right? The day, today is one moment within itself, and then there's all those little moments scattered in it, right? Situations, experiences, and all that. And from a Buddhist perspective, aren't we supposed to be in the moment? Well, today is a moment, and there are only todays that we can actually experience. Aha! There is no tomorrow through our experience. There is no past, really, through our experience, because that's gone already. Today is a moment. It is the moment that matters. What we do during today, that's what matters. Not the moment before. Not the moment to come. Not yesterday. And not tomorrow. We're supposed to do what needs to be done right now. In this moment. There isn't a next moment and there isn't a previous moment. There's this moment. There's only this one. And, you know, as long as we do what is appropriate and needed in this moment, shouldn't the following moments turn out pretty good? That's the idea. That is the intent behind.
behind thinking and acting with mindfulness so that what happens in a current moment promotes a wholesome next moment. So the moment that you guys came in here and sat down on these cushions, that was a moment. And what we're shooting for now is all the next moments after that, while we're together, we want them to lead to something wholesome. When we get confronted with a surprising or disturbing Buddhist teaching, and they're out there, you probably encountered them yourselves, we have to consider how they connect with the Four Ennobling Truths. Because if they fit within that alleviation of suffering eightfold path thing, well then they're worth exploring further. If you can't connect them there somehow, you might just want to set it aside for a while. The Buddha teaches that all human beings deal with suffering. Now, in engaged dharma, we, we, we like to describe suffering a little more. We call it unsatisfactoriness, discontent, and anguish. Right? That falls under the rubric of suffering or dukkha. And do we want to wait until tomorrow to help alleviate that suffering? Like, if you're discontent with what's going on at home right now, do you really want to wait till tomorrow to do something about it, or would you rather do something about it now? The best way to answer the question about do we want to wait lies in the Eightfold Path, which is in itself, of course, an aspect of the Four Ennobling Truths. So we want to contemplate the Eightfold Path. Break it down, if you will. Appropriate view. Appropriate view isn't a view of the future, and it's not a view of the past. Appropriate view is seeing clearly, without delusion or personal perception, what is right in front of you today. The future isn't. The past isn't. But today is. Suffering that happened in the past, we really can't do much about. And no one really knows what the suffering is going to be like tomorrow. So we deal with today. We deal with right now. You know, during this pandemic, uh, we talk, people are taking their temperatures often. That's because we don't know what it's going to be like in the next moment right? or the next day. So every time we take our temperature during the day, we're, we're acknowledging that fact that the temperature we took at 6 a.m. this morning is not going to be the 6 p.m. temperature. We go to intent, appropriate intent. Intent must be, set, must be to set aside craving and attachment in each moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. And also a, attachment to that moment, even. Uh, whatever intent that we had in the past is gone. It's irrelevant. It was either effective or it wasn't effective. For the future, we don't have any idea what is to come. So how can we determine what intent we will need to have? Therefore, isn't it more appropriate to focus on what our intent is right now? You may be thinking, but hey, I intend to do the right thing in the future too. Okay. That's a good thought. That's a fine thought. But it is your intention right now. Not a future intent. Because intent is for today. Appropriate speech. Whenever speech, whatever speech we engage in before right now is past. We can't change it. We can apologize for it or whatever, but we can't change what was said. There can be no idea what we may need to say in the future. We just don't know. It is what comes out of your mouth right now that matters. We don't speak yesterday or tomorrow. We are always speaking today. You know, even when we write something down, and let's say we write a letter and we mail it to somebody, we wrote it on Monday, it gets to them on Friday, and they read it on Saturday, we are still speaking on Saturday, right? We spoke on Monday, but we're speaking again on Saturday. 
actions, appropriate actions. Actions can't actions taken in the past again, we can't change them. Actions in the future, how the heck can we know what actions we're going to need to take? We don't know. So you might be thinking that it is a good idea to plan ahead. Sure, absolutely. And whatever action you pre-plan will most likely have to change depending on the unique circumstances of the moment you find yourself in. Besides, and I know this is going to sound trite, tomorrow will be today, and today is going to eventually be tomorrow. Focusing on our actions tomorrow is just fondling a future that we can't know. Focusing on our actions today, that's appropriate action. We may think that our job or career, our livelihood, will get better tomorrow. And tomorrow arrives in the shape of today. And it hasn't gotten any better. We think, huh, ah, well, it'll get better tomorrow. And tomorrow arrives. And today, that better today, still hasn't happened. Craving a better tomorrow, one that becomes a today, isn't effective. Doing what is needed today is, because what you do today will affect that tomorrow. Effort, appropriate effort. Effort's got to be focused entirely on the today that we're in. Because that's when it's the most effective. Doing something for today, yesterday, didn't, you know, had a little bit of help, right? But doing something in the future for the past, well, doesn't really work out too well, right? Can't make, can't make effort in past moments, and you can't make effort in the future. At this moment, I hear someone thinking, but isn't that what a retirement account is for? Effort for the future. Effort for, yeah. But what it is not is effort for, or it is not effort in the future. It is effort made today for the future. But the effort still has to be made today. That effort is not made in the future. Not one of us can be mindful about the past or about the future. Concentrating on the past or the future is useless and is certain to cause suffering. Something we try to avoid. Because the past you can't change and the future you can't really possibly know. And today, well today, that's right in front of you. It's right here in your face. It is happening right now. So, be mindful of it. Mindfulness is definitely a today activity. Viewing today as a moment packed with other moments, you'll engage mindfulness today. Which, by the way, is the only moment. The others you might think about are gone or they're not here yet. So be mindful today. There is no tomorrow in Buddhism because today is what is important. Doing what we can today is what matters. Doing what we need to do today is what will help us ensure a more wholesome future, if you will. How can the Dharma of no tomorrow then benefit our practice? Well, practice is best when it affects the moment, the day we are in. Today is the only day you have to practice meditation or to practice generosity of spirit, or acceptance, or loving kindness, or any of the other paths that we find ourselves on as Buddhists. Why that? Why is that? Though? Well, today is the only day that you're absolutely certain you're going to have. You are absolutely certain you have this day because you are currently right in the midst of it. Putting thought and effort into a tomorrow you are uncertain of 
will dilute what you can do today. You can alleviate suffering today. You can allow cravings and attachments to fall away today. You can follow the paths of appropriate view and intent and speech and action and livelihood and effort and mindfulness and concentration today. Waiting until tomorrow, that's just procrastination and delusion. In Buddhism, there is no tomorrow. Today is our opportunity for being. Today is our opportunity to do what matters. Today is our opportunity to walk the path. Today is our opportunity to be examples as Buddhists. Because there is no tomorrow. Thank mm -hmm. you.